Greetings, good people. Well, Erica Mena is back on social media and she is calling out Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. You know, it really just dawned on me, color me slow, but it just dawned on me that the only franchise that is on MTV is Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Now I DVR everything. So if it ain't on my DVR, I'm not gonna remember to keep up with it. But it's all the other Love and Hip Hops are still on VH1. Why is Love and Hip Hop the only franchise on MTV? Am I tripping? Did y'all notice that too? Anyway, so apparently there is going to be a round table discussion. <laughs> immediately following the season finale of love and hip-hop okay so love and hip-hop posted that on tuesday september 26 at 9 p.m immediately following the season finale of love and hip-hop atl the conversation continues with love and hip-hop atlanta racism colorism and the uncomfortable truth the roundtable discusses the recent events that aired on the show before mtv decided to stop filming with erica mena international colorism expert dr sarah l webb founder and owner of Colorism Healing, a leader in raising awareness, shifting attitudes and taking action, leads an open dialogue that features Spice, Yandy, Jock, Scrappy, Sierra, Amy, and a special appearance from Rashida sharing their experiences. Now I'm gonna tell you something. This has got to be the biggest crock of B -double -L, B -U -double -L that I've seen since this so-called conversation about colorism with Shawnee O'Neal and what's my man name that hosted the reunion that time when they had OG sitting in the back. Um, I remember doing a video. I'll probably link that at the end of this video. This one I was on camera child back in the day. Okay. When I was cute anyway, still cute though, but <laughs> okay. Focus, focus, royalty, focus. Okay. I'm gonna try to be serious. This is really funny though. Just hilarious. I see her comment here that said, this is funnier than me. It is because here's the thing. You still profited off of the airing of this episode when Erica Mena said what she said. Although I'm going to say this, I, I see a lot of people. I saw a lot of people saying that MTV shouldn't have aired this episode. I absolutely think they should have. Uh, they should have aired the episode because if you do some messed up stuff, regardless who else is doing the same thing, you should be called out. Like it doesn't absolve you of being wrong because other people are doing it too. You know what I mean? So Erica Mena decided to take the social media and she had a few things to say. And her post reads, I think it's absolutely fair that I speak under this post, especially because I was indeed filming nonstop for seven months after the actual incident between me and that other individual happened. Oh, so you can call somebody something, re refer to someone as something respectful, Erica. Okay, but some people say that she was angry. Anywho, her post continues. The network chose to still film with me nonstop, which is why I was used as the base storyline for the whole second half of the actual season. They had this footage for months. They chose to edit they they chose to edit it how they wanted and aired it it's only now they are desperate trying to save face and using me to so i guess to do so if i'm being used to set an example why was i not a part of this quote unquote round table discussion why are they so desperate to film nonstop right now to make up for everything that i shot that they can't use now desperate to save face but true and face but true and only reason a statement was even made by the network was because the backlash not because they truly believed what i said was a racial slur and then it cut off so it continues here the fact that they're now making a mockery of the situation by using individuals who have indeed said things just as bad so you are admitting that what you said was bad continuing um messy yandy herself in 2015 at hot 97 on air called me an an a i guess a double s monkey to try to save face for this network's sponsors is pathetic if you really wanted to save face why not have the two women who are just as wrong in that scene have this conversation since now this network feels it needs to be had I gave this franchise 13 plus years and now they need to save face so they are going to wear my name out on this to make up for their f up the sad truth in all of this this franchise has always depicted us as zoo animals anyway my god 
sending so much love to my supporters i love you all this girl has got to be dumber than a box of rocks and i think that's part of the reason why they're getting rid of you not only are you dumb you're a liability now i don't disagree with everything that she said yes the franchise is going to try to save face and yes they're they're pretty much giving you the boot but guess what erica mena you handed them the boot and you also laced it up for them to kick you to the curb. It does not mean that you didn't do anything wrong. You, you, you still, you kind of subtly admitted that, you know, the whole me too thing, or I wasn't the only one I should say thing. Yandy did it too. Yandy said something bad too. You know the ramifications of what you said. And then to end off your statement by saying that the franchise has always depicted us as zoo animals anyway, does it seem that you're remorseful whatsoever? Now, I found this funny. This I saw over on Twitter. After she wrote all of that, um, Bam, Bambi, typed interesting dot, dot, dot. Why don't you elaborate? Bambi, you have a big mouth when it comes to everything else. What, what, what's interesting about this? Listen. Erica Mena is not 100% wrong in her statement. Unfortunately, this is the wrong time for you to make this statement, and you are wrong in this situation, okay? Right message, wrong person, I guess. Now, let's get back to this roundtable discussion. See, this, this right here is so annoying to me, but MTV said, uh-uh, you're not going to sully our name. We're going to nip this in the bud. Like I said, this is very reminiscent of when Evelyn Lozada made remarks about OG, and OG was ganged up on on basketball wives and interesting evelyn lozada is returning to basketball wives so they sat her out for a little while and the fact that she is coming back is quite disgusting and the fact that shawnee is supporting her return to the franchise is even more disgusting but anyway i think the same would possibly happen to erica mena we'll sit you out for a while let things cool off people tend to forget about stuff like this anyway they're mad for a couple of weeks maybe a month or two and then they'll forget about it something else will piss them off and then we will bring you back and we'll make up the storyline that you went to counseling and you understand the ramifications and then we will continue with the foolishness and the shenanigans on the reality show that's what i think might happen if love and hip-hop the franchise even lasts that long anyway I do think that this is very interesting that they decided to do this. I agree with Erica Mena when she stated, why not have the two individuals that were basically going at it, her and Spice, sit down and have a conversation or have Spice and Erica and everyone else sit down and have a conversation. Um, it's performative, but I don't expect anything less from a network, a major network like MTV even VH1, very performative. Um, and again, going back to uh, Basketball Wives, when they had OG, that year that they had OG backstage and she couldn't sit with the other ladies, that that to me was so, it was disgusting. I, don't, I didn't watch Basketball Wives after that. I didn't because you're trying to drive home the point that she is a threat and you guys are some damsel, it, damsels in distress when in fact a lot of them are colorists, um and and bigots so and evelyn is coming back how appropriate for the brand anyway what do you guys think about this okay even though like i said erica was out of line there are some people that are still defending her saying that she did not mean it in a as a racial slur but then she also referred to the network as treating them like zoo animals so just because someone treats you like a zoo animal you act like one so are you also admitting erica that you act like a zoo animal and you think spice is a zoo animal too you think all of y'all are zoo animals is that why you called her a blue monkey she made herself look stupid toward the end, but but as foolish as she is, she did have some points that I agreed with. I do think if you're gonna if this is gonna mean something, have this expert sit down and include sit down with the cast, whoever wants to participate, and also include Erica. I I I I don't think that that's a bad idea, but actually now that i think about it it would probably make you look worse erica because i don't think that you're ready to accept responsibility of what came out of your mouth just because yandy said it said something that you deem to be just as bad as what you said or another castmate may have said something that you deem just as bad as you said it doesn't take away from the fact that what you said definitely had a impact on the network <laughs> And it had a social impact. You are on a huge platform. And if you're going to be irresponsible, then there's consequences that 
there's consequences to that, man. You're an adult. You're not a kid. You can't use the excuse. Well, Yandy said it too. Yandy was talking too. You handed them the knife to cut you off, sis. So your hands ain't clean. So you can't go pointing the finger at what anybody else has done. Now, Love & Hip Hop ATL is with MTV now. So MTV is choosing to handle this the way that they see fit. And it's either you get out or you get out. And they helped you get out. And you're just mad because things are not going in your favor. Now, am I going to watch this sit down? Yes. Am I going to be back to talk about it? If there's anything to talk about it. But if you want to see the video that I did, uh, however, how many years ago was that? Three, three years ago? Anyway, where I kind of went into talking about how bogus that sit down was with Shawnee, the colorist conversation. I'm going to link it at the end of this video. So those of you who are new to my channel, and you never seen the video before check it out but what i want you guys to do is drop down in the comments and let me know what you think um i'm curious to see how this is going to pan out i think it's going to be a whole bunch of when i was coming up this happened um i experienced colorism i always felt like this i think it's gonna it is it's it's gonna be very performative um I don't know. This is this is going to be interesting. And I know everyone is going to be talking about this nonstop, probably for the rest of the week. So we shall see. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to take MTV seriously, considering that this network was very adamant about not allowing music videos from black artists on their platform. You know, when, when MTV, a little bit of hip hop history or pop culture history, when MTV started, it was like a fight for Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson's videos to even be played on MTV. And the fact that, the, that you know, you have the MTV awards where they're paying attention to hip hop. It's like the only reason why you're welcoming or you welcomed uh, black artists is because you saw how lucrative, for instance, Michael Jackson was the biggest artist in the world. He is one of the biggest artists in the world, extremely popular. And, you know, his management had to fight to get his videos played on MTV. And once you saw how financially lucrative it was, then you started inviting more and more and more. Then, you know, you had Yo! MTV raps and then they started embracing the hip hop culture because they saw how profitable it was, not because they thought it was beneficial or not because they thought that it was the genre uh black music or black artists were worthy to be on your little stinking network so again it, it screams performative some people may say it's progress you can think what you want i know how i feel and i just expressed it so now what i want you to do is express your thoughts will you be watching oh i'm gonna watch and if i have much to say i'll be back with another video and if i ain't got nothing to say about it I probably won't say nothing about it. I'm not going to waste my time. All right, y'all. That's all I got. Talk to you later.